Right, uh, so uh, just after I finished what I put in the last video, I got the gear linkage set up um, and then I got started yesterday as well on making up the exhaust downpipe. So when we took it out the Audi we just cut it there behind the expansion joint, the flexi joint, because I needed, uh, I wanted that. So I've just made this up um now to at least bring it back as far as where I'll put a rear silencer. Um again, I don't have any T twenty five exhaust. Uh, if if you were doing a turbo diesel or whatever, you'd get away with whatever you have probably, maybe slight modification. But uh yeah, so I've just put in a couple of elbows and a piece of straight pipe to at least pointed out the back of the van um, so I can go if I do get it running uh, it's not just billowing smoke forward into the engine compartment so I'm going to put a little tab there and I've made another one that I'm going to weld onto the subframe and that is I'll probably connect it with something like a little section of uh, an old timing belt or something tough like that just so it's supported um, that comes down around here to around somewhere around this point and my intention is to mount my rear silencer length or widthways um, onto these bars uh, with whatever kind of rubber mounting I make in the end. Uh, I haven't got a silencer yet. I'm simply going to see what I have around here and I did Query whether um, I should just go down to the co-op and uh, see what tractor silencers are there. Um, be something to base it on. Or I could go down to the Audi the engine came out of and pull the rear silencer with the stainless tips off of that. Uh, I don't know whether it's rotten or not, but uh, that's another option. Kind of had a big clear out of scrap recently, so I don't know if I've got any silencers lying around here. Uh, it'd be nice to get a stainless one, uh, but again, we'll see. So I'm going to stick this on now, and then I will leave the exhaust system at that for now and go back to uh, go find the next job in line to get this thing running. So that's that bolted in place for now. Um, I'll clean it all up and give it a coat of uh, VHT paint and maybe uh, even use some uh, manifold wrap on it. Uh, but uh, yeah, so you want a bit of flexibility in it. Um, I've just used a little bit of timing belt. That bit's a bit narrow actually, I'll replace that later on. I just, uh, I don't have a full belt lying around the place. I can find, I think I threw away the one off the TDI. Um, so. That's another piece done. I fully bound, bolted the front mount on the gearbox as well. Um, and I'm going to order a kit to rebuild the gear shift. I'll go back to looking at that actually. So I need to get a kit to sort this out um, and do something about the threads on top of the gear stick as well. I considered using this one. This is the Audi one. Um, Thought maybe I could do something with that, but the bushing in there is actually broken as well. This this black bushing here, um, that's separated from whatever it's supposed to be attached to. So it probably is not worth messing up T25 stuff, putting that in if that's not right either. Uh, so kits for these aren't much. I know that will give me a messed up um, gear selection, but if it works for getting a movie about, that'll be fine. Um, so, yeah, I need to think about these electrics soon. Uh, I suppose the clutch, clutch slave cylinder uh, is probably, I could go and connect that up now actually, that might be something that can be done and I want to have a look. A battery will fully mount in there, one second, I'll get the light. So that's a fairly decent sized battery and it completely fits in there. So. I might put in some um, retaining brackets in there to hold that and must go through pipe work etc as well and see what's there from this engine that will work and what won't. 
whether I need to buy, order some T25 pipe work. So take a look at some of that stuff now. Yeah, I'm just pottering around the shade. Not really going doing anything today, but um, it's late in the evening now. So I just wanted to show you what I did when I took this out. So we disconnected nothing from the engine. Um, so that entire wiring loom is complete. Everything is still plugged in where it was plugged in on the car, with the exception of maybe took this off for the header bottle and I'm guessing there's probably one there somewhere that went to a brake reservoir. Uh, so what we have then is it's the main block of relays. So there's a ECU plug. This block of relays, which is also fully wired in, bar these two, the big plus and negative cables. And then this is where the loom drops through the bulkhead into the car over the accelerator. Um, so I pull that up and just cut them all off. So one of these at least, I think it's this one, is just for the accelerator um, the fly bar throttle actually and I think some other few of these the way they're twisted we picked them all out before and just matched them all to the other ones so that we were able to uh, actually more of those twisted so that might be the accelerator one um, not all of these actually have something in them there seems to be considerably more wires on this side than this side but when you take the accelerator plug say We'll just, for instance, give it all of that. Um, there's not actually a huge amount. These smaller ones appear to probably be, I'd imagine, gauge senders. Um, and then we have, there's a few bigger positives here and stuff. There's definitely, this block is definitely power. So I was trying to find some continuity between some of these pins and some of these, but that's really, there's too many combinations there and I wasn't, I got bored of that quick. So what I need to do really is find out what does what. Um, so I'm gonna do a bit some investigation into that and uh, I will update you at the end of that to show you how I got on. So. That is where I'm at with that. Uh, I did melt the header bottle there last thing yesterday evening. I know the fuel filter normally lives there, but that seemed a nice tidy place to put the Audi header bottle. I'm not worried about this one at the back here. I just want to declutter. Um, so that's the Audi header bottle. I may get a filter. Not a lot of room there between the thing. I was thinking I'd like to get something like the Mitsubishi L200 um, filter head because it's got the priming pump on top. Let me actually just put, put one there. I'll see. Um, and the battery will probably go and live in there. Might be a bit awkward to get in with the header bottle, but I'll, uh, I'll look at that a bit more carefully before I decide anything major. Also, on that side of things, I thought, oh, well, I'm going to have to make a box, etc. to put the ECU into. So I took the whole box that the ECU was in before, that's where it bolted down and went through the bulkhead underneath that. Um, so there's a sealed box there for it. Maybe that may come in handy. The air box isn't really going to fit. They kind of need the same space in the engine bay. So I may have to remove the airflow meter and uh, Put something like a K&N filter or whatever on it. Um, yeah. Right, probably might go in, do some googling on that. So this has been a fun day. Um, yeah, I've been basically, I was working out what all this crap was. Uh, can't say I've figured out a huge amount. Well, I know what most of those are for now, but I haven't actually done anything with them. Um, spent ages trying to work out why I wasn't getting power to the ECU. 
um, discovered this small earth that was cut off here. Um, yeah, that's given the ground to my ECU, and I have sussed out the power for the ECU, although I can't get this relay to switch on. Uh, so I'm manually switching it on, but when I do, the pump is now cycling. So yeah, uh, so that 219 relay isn't uh, isn't switching on for some reason, possibly to do with this. <laughs> um, so if I m manually put that on, e.g. wedge a piece of cardboard in it, the pump goes through its cycle, uh, there's diesel coming out the return, uh, just since I was speaking a minute ago, I have stuck a fuel filter in there. Um, just uh, the old kind of standard type that jetters and stuff all had. Uh, diesel all over. Uh, so I've got diesel run down to it. Um, I can crank it over. There's diesel coming out the return. Uh, you can smell unburnt, unburnt, uh, unburnt diesel out the exhaust. Uh, battery's low, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it be now today, and I should get some time at it tomorrow. Just bled some diesel there out of a gallon for now, and stuck that there as a return for a little while. I just want to see will it fire. Uh, but I'm actually really pleased now that ECU hasn't blown up yet. Uh, I'm not expecting it to run well. Uh, because there's a lot of stuff not on it. Air flow meter is just on the ground under it, plugged in. Uh, there's no actuator on the turbo. There's a lot of stuff missing, but it'd be interesting to see what it fire. Uh, so, yeah, I'll just mess around with it again tomorrow, and at least then I'll go, right, okay, I know what I have with wiring. I still I need to wire up a diagnostics port as well, so that I can reset any fault codes etc that I get when uh, I inevitably get because I've got trying to start it with so much stuff off but yeah we'll look at it again in the morning okay um, it's next morning battery's charged uh, so I'm gonna get that hooked up and give this thing a crank over and see if it'll fire off or pump diesel through or hopefully I'd like to see it just make an attempt to start or idle or do something um, and then I'll pretty much be forgetting that again and moving on with getting everything a bit more properly finalized on it. Um, it's a pouring wet horrible day which is good in a way because it means I'm here doing this and not elsewhere. Um, so yeah we'll get on with it and see how we go. Okay, I'll just let the camera roll for a while. Um, Give it a time to see if it does anything. Pump started cycling. Phew. Right, we have an unburnt diesel out the exhaust. Um, Volkswagens are generally crap without heater plugs and I don't have it set up to run heater plugs, so I'm just going to put that fan on. We might get a bit of heat in the cylinder, it's just doing that anyway. Um, I don't have an easy start, not I like it. I think it ruins a lot of unit start videos if we just for half a can of heat or anything. Right, 
you know, crack a few injectors loose. Um, although, as soon as we do have one done, these looking at the exhaust, then it might not be necessary. Right, my brother made the mistake of not tying his batteries down, so he required two more batteries. Bit of fuel up then, but not not much. I have fuel. There's not much else it needs, so it's just getting it to spark to life really now. Okay, cannot find easy start. Uh, I'm just going to pick some up, but in the meantime, I'm just trying all the old tricks. So, this is Petra the Rag. Okay, she fires, 
a bit worried I might still have an immobilizer thing. Now, I'm messing around with it a bit, and the ECU does not seem to be giving power to the fuel solenoid, which is a bit strange, because it was starting, or kind of starting, and it seemed to have some fuel, but there's definitely no power going down to that solenoid when I turn on the relay. So, I've ran a wire. It's already been spliced before. Um, so I've ran a, uh, ran a wire off the solenoid and separated it from the ECU so that I can click on the solenoid separately. Uh, so we'll give that a go. Got it. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, yeah, got to vacate the premises for a little bit. That's great. Um, at least we know now it runs. I'm not worried about the smoke and misfire and all that stuff. It, it really is half rigged at the moment. Um, there's no turbo plumbed in at all. Um, the turbo actuator is lying there somewhere next to it, plugged in, but with no vacuum pipes attached. The mass airflow meter is lying on the ground plugged in but again not recording anything and so there's a lot of variables there and I have a whole bunch of wires here so I still have to figure out what they do but we at least know that it runs um, when I saw this engine in the car it was starting and cutting out uh, so we reckon that he already had a key fob problem with the immobilizer uh, but there may be something here that I haven't done that's causing that ECU to not send power to that star solenoid. But that doesn't really matter. As long as I don't create a fault later on by wiring it directly, I'll, I'll happily wire it directly. Uh, 
but we'll look into that more. Uh, I'll go through any vital uh, ECU pins that I found, etc. Because I found it hard to find some schematics. I found it. I did find one that was quite good. It was just so bad I couldn't. It was impossible to read it. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know why that relay isn't switching on. Uh, that's another thing I have to look at. The relay might be goosed. The connections on it didn't look particularly nice. Uh, but for the most part, I'm really happy with that. It started, it actually, once the fuel cell light was turned on, it started really easily. Um, so, yeah, good to know, good to know. And as well as that, I'm delighted that my um, remote throttle works, so I can just, uh, I'm actually going to fit this in the cab, not on the engine, because like I said, I don't have a cable, so... Uh, I'd rather have that electronic one up there and do away with a big long sticking troublesome cable. So uh, that would be good. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, back to uh, figuring out all the rest of this and getting a few other things tidied up, like uh, get fuel filter put away. Uh, maybe want to get this engine over sideways a little bit from where it is, and yeah, a whole lot of tidying up and sorting stuff out so I think that's a fairly good place to wrap this one up um, thanks for watching uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see the end of this thing someday um, hit the like button as well if you don't mind and I will speak to you next time thank you, cheers <laughs>